When 12,000 tons of orange peels were dumped in a barren forest, most thought it was an environmental disaster. But 15 years later, a shocking discovery was made on that land, a transformation beyond belief. What secrets did the jungle hide? Once beautiful and wild, the national park now had most of its forests looking like a wasteland. Visitors had walked the trails for years and noticed these barren patches, wondering what had gone wrong. But for Dr. Maria Walker, it was personal. Her frustration was evident, resulting from years of watching this once thriving ecosystem crumble despite every conventional attempt to restore it. Out of desperation, she began to consider ideas beyond traditional solutions. Then, she came up with a risky but seemingly crazy plan that could either save the forest or ruin what little was left. What if we dump tons of orange peels here? She said aloud, almost as a challenge, startling her colleagues. The ecologists exchanged wide-eyed glances. It sounded more like a joke than a scientific proposal. Orange peels? Here? It was unheard of. But Maria wasn't joking. She explained her wild idea. The nearby juice factory, Pure Squeeze, produced mountains of orange peel waste daily. Normally, this waste was incinerated or dumped in landfills, but she believed it held hidden potential. The processed peels lacked the harmful limonene oil and could act as a natural compost, smothering the invasive grasses that had choked the soil for decades. It could be the solution they'd been searching for, a gamble on nature's waste to revive a dying ecosystem. A heated debate broke out. The risks were enormous. What if the peels attracted pests or caused irreversible damage? But the more they argued, the more it became clear. They had run out of safer options. If they did nothing, the forest decline was certain. In a tense moment of silence, Maria made her final plea. Look around, she said, gesturing to the lifeless expanse. We're losing this forest. We either try something drastic or watch it disappear. After much research and discussion, Maria and her team decided to proceed. So, they contacted Pure Squeeze, the juice company, eager to find a sustainable solution for its ever-growing disposal problem, was intrigued. They generated tons of orange peels daily and had no idea where to dispose of them without incurring steep costs. Maria's plan to use the peels for compost seemed like a win-win situation. The juice company would save on disposal costs and the park would benefit from the rich organic matter. Pure Squeeze was open to the idea. Maria and her team were permitted to start dumping the orange peels on a barren stretch of land in the park deemed unsuitable for other purposes. Weeks turned into months and the site became a regular stop for Pure Squeeze's trucks. They arrived in steady intervals, unloading fresh batches of orange peels onto the barren ground. Each new delivery added to the growing mound of discarded fruit rinds. The once empty and lonely land was now covered in thick layers of bright orange waste spreading further across the park every week. The piles kept growing, expanding in every direction. What started as a small test area was now a sprawling expanse dominated by heaps of orange peels. The peels were stacked in uneven layers, forming a dense, compact mass that seemed almost impenetrable. The bright, citrus-scented surface was deceptive, hiding a murky mess underneath where the peels had started to rot and break down slowly. Despite the mounting heaps, the trucks continued to roll in. No one was entirely sure how long the dumping would take or the eventual outcome. The project had begun with optimism, but now it felt more like a relentless cycle, more and more waste piling up, burying the barren earth beneath tons of citrus peels. However, as the piles of orange waste grew, so did the public's discontent. Environmental activists and concerned citizens began organizing protests, calling for the dumping to stop. They argued that while the project's intention had been noble, its execution had been reckless. They pointed to the odor, the unsightly piles of peels and the unknown long-term effects on the ecosystem as evidence that the project had gone too far. While the activists gained momentum, Pure Squeeze's competitors saw an opportunity to capitalize on the controversy. For years, these rival juice companies had faced high waste disposal costs, paying hefty fees to ensure their byproducts were processed correctly and disposed of in regulated facilities. The news that Pure Squeeze had found a loophole, effectively dumping their waste for free under the guise of an ecological project, was met with outrage behind closed doors. Quietly, these companies began funneling resources into the growing opposition movement. They funded advocacy groups and hired public relation firms to amplify the concerns of residents and environmental activists. The strategy was subtle but effective. 
They knew that directly attacking Pure Squeeze might seem self-serving, so instead they worked behind the scenes, supporting those who already had a vested interest in stopping the project. This financial backing allowed the activists to organize larger protests, launch awareness campaigns, and conduct preliminary studies on the potential environmental impact of the orange peel dumping. Soon, media outlets picked up on the story. News segments showed aerial footage of the sprawling orange waste piles accompanied by interviews with residents and environmentalists. A narrative began. Pure Squeeze was portrayed as a greedy corporation exploiting public land to cut costs, while the ecosystem and local communities suffered the consequences. The messages resonated with viewers and public sentiment turned sharply against the project. With growing public pressure and bolstered by the hidden support of Pure Squeeze's competitors, the matter inevitably found its way to court. A coalition of environmental advocacy groups, residents, and park preservation organizations filed the lawsuit. Lawyers for the plaintiffs highlighted the disturbing evidence of environmental damage. The overwhelming smell of decaying orange peels was driving away vital pollinators like bees, crucial for the health of local flora. Additionally, the sudden surge of organic matter risked disrupting the local food chain as animals began consuming the peels, which could upset their diets and lead to unforeseen health issues. Though initial findings were preliminary, they raised significant concerns, prompting the plaintiffs to invoke the precautionary principle. Even a small chance of long-term ecological harm was enough to justify halting the project. On the other hand, Pure Squeeze's legal team defended the project vehemently. They insisted that the park authorities had approved the dumping and that the orange peels, being entirely organic, posed no significant risk to the environment. They pointed to preliminary studies that had suggested potential benefits, like increased soil fertility and reduced erosion. However, these arguments were increasingly overshadowed by the mounting evidence and public opinion turning against them. Tensions ran high in the courtroom. Environmental experts, economists, and representatives from both sides were called to testify. The media coverage was relentless, with daily updates on the proceedings and dramatic headlines that painted the case as a David and Goliath battle, concerned citizens and environmental advocates facing off against a powerful corporation. Despite Maria's earnest defense and the compelling data her team presented, the concerns the plaintiffs raised couldn't be overlooked. The court ruled in favor of the opposition, and the project was shut down immediately. The site became a stark reminder of the project's collapse in the following months. What had begun as a hopeful attempt to rejuvenate barren land now stood as an abandoned wasteland, a monument to bureaucratic failure and environmental miscalculation. The once promising venture was now ridiculed by media outlets and discussed in environmental circles as a case study of what could go wrong with large-scale experimental waste disposal efforts. Pure Squeeze's competitors were quick to celebrate its downfall. They viewed the legal defeat as a victory against a rival who had tried to cut corners. The Orange Peel dumping site gradually disappeared from public memory as years passed. The initial media frenzy waned, and the story became just another entry in the annals of failed environmental projects. Local authorities were overwhelmed by other pressing issues, and no resources were allocated to clean up the site. The 12,000 metric tons of orange peels already dumped across three hectares of land were left behind and abandoned as part of the halted operation. Fifteen years later, the project was a mere footnote in the history books. The site was forgotten, a quiet and secluded patch of land far removed from the beaten paths of tourists and hikers. But not everyone had forgotten. Dr. Lena Moore, a fresh-faced environmental scientist with a new PhD in sustainable waste management, stumbled upon the project while researching case studies for her thesis. The story of the orange peel experiment piqued her interest. Unlike most of her peers, who saw it as a cautionary tale, Lena saw it as a puzzle that needed solving. Determined to understand what had truly happened, Lena began her investigation. She spent months combing through old records, digging into court documents, media reports, and the limited scientific studies published during the project's brief lifespan. It became clear that many details about the site had been overlooked or forgotten in the years since. The dumping site was assumed to have been an environmental failure, but no one had returned to assess the long-term ecological impact. For Lena, this was a glaring gap in the narrative one she intended to fill. Armed with her research and a burning curiosity, Lena decided to organize an expedition to the abandoned dumping site. She secured a small grant from her university, citing the need to study the long-term effects of organic waste disposal on local ecosystems. 
Her professors were skeptical, seeing the project as a dead end, but Lena was undeterred. She assembled a team of young, eager researchers and set off to the park, determined to see for herself what had become of the infamous Orange Peel dumping ground. The trip to the site was arduous. The area was remote and the landscape had changed significantly since the original project had been conducted. Upon reaching what should have been the edge of the site, the team paused, confused. Instead of a barren, littered field of decomposing orange peels, they stood at the edge of a lush, vibrant forest. Thick vines and towering trees obscured their view, making it impossible to see anything resembling the description from the old records. It was as if the landscape had been entirely transformed. Are we in the right place? One of the researchers asked, looking around in bewilderment. Lena checked her map and nodded. This is it, she said slowly, eyes scanning the dense foliage. But it doesn't look anything like it should. The team pushed deeper into the forest, their confusion growing with every step. The barren, eroded land they had read about was nowhere to be found. Instead, they found themselves in a thriving ecosystem filled with the sounds of birds chirping and insects buzzing. Only when they came across an old, faded yellow sign, almost completely enveloped by thick jungle vines, did the truth dawn on them. This was the original dumping site. The sign was a remnant of the initial project and marked the boundaries of the area where the peels had been spread. Yet everything around them suggested a transformation. The orange peels, it seemed, had not merely decomposed, they had catalyzed an extraordinary ecological revival. Lena and her team spent the next several weeks studying the area, documenting every detail they could find. When they arrived, it was clear that the landscape was nothing like the barren, eroded terrain described in the old reports. Instead, a dense canopy of green stretched above them, the sunlight barely piercing through the layers of leaves and branches. Once a hardened, nutrient-depleted crust, the ground was now covered with a thick, spongy layer of dark humus. As Lena scooped up a handful of soil, she noted its rich, earthy smell, a sign of healthy decomposition processes and abundant microbial life. The transformation was extraordinary. The team set up quadrants to measure the area systematically, recording a remarkable 183% increase in above-ground biomass compared to the neighboring untreated land. What had once been a patch of struggling grasses and exposed rock was now bursting with plant life. Young saplings of native species jostled for space, their vibrant leaves a testament to the nutrient boost the decayed orange peels had provided. The researchers found themselves surrounded by an unexpected variety of trees, mahogany, cedar, and even a few rare species typically seen in old-growth forests. These trees weren't just surviving, they were thriving, towering above the understory plants, their roots digging deep into the newly enriched soil. At the heart of the site stood an enormous fig tree, an unmistakable sign of a flourishing ecosystem. The tree's trunk was so massive that it took three researchers, arms outstretched and fingers barely touching, to wrap around its circumference. Lena marveled at the site, knowing that such a large fig tree wasn't just a plant, but a keystone species. Fig trees provided food for countless animals, from birds to small mammals, and their presence indicated a complete, self-sustaining habitat. The team spotted colorful toucans nesting in its branches while a family of coatis rummaged through the leaf litter below. The diversity of life didn't stop at the flora. The team surveyed the undergrowth and found evidence of a thriving insect population. Beetles, ants, and butterflies of various species flitted around, contributing to the complex web of life that had re-established itself. The soil samples revealed an explosion of fungal networks essential for nutrient cycling and plant health. Lena knew these signs pointed to a rapid, unexpected recovery of the ecosystem, one that even the most optimistic projections hadn't predicted. The team's data showed a diverse tree canopy and a wide array of underbrush and ground cover plants, some of which hadn't been documented in this region for decades. It was as if the orange peels had acted as a catalyst, accelerating the regeneration of the rainforest far beyond what had been considered possible. The stark contrast between the lush regrowth on the orange peel site and the sparse, degraded land just a few hundred feet away was undeniable. Despite its hasty shutdown, Lena realized that the original project had achieved something remarkable. The combination of organic material and the region's ideal climate triggered a rapid and unexpected ecological recovery. The abandoned orange peels had, in effect, kick-started the regeneration of a small rainforest. Recognizing the significance of this success, Lena reached out to Dr. Maria Walker, the original scientist behind the project. 
While the scientific community had long dismissed Maria's efforts, Lena wanted to ensure she received the credit she deserved for her bold and innovative idea. Maria, touched by Lena's gesture, enthusiastically joined the study, lending her expertise and sharing insights from the project's early days. Lena's team's findings were groundbreaking. They published their results, causing a sensation in the scientific community. Environmentalists who had once criticized the project were forced to reconsider their stance. The abandoned dumping site was hailed as an accidental success story, demonstrating the incredible potential of organic waste recycling when done in the right conditions. Lena's research did not go unnoticed. Media outlets picked up the story, framing it as a twist ending to a long-forgotten environmental saga. The once maligned Orange Peel Project was now seen as a serendipitous victory for ecological restoration, a case of nature healing itself with a little help from discarded waste. Ultimately, what had been labeled as a failure became an inspiring example of nature's resilience. Lena's discovery breathed new life into the study of sustainable waste management, prompting new research into the potential uses of organic byproducts for land restoration. Pure Squeeze's competitors, once eager to see the project fail, now scrambled to replicate its unexpected success in their operations. Who knew 12,000 tons of orange peels could turn barren land into a thriving rainforest? What did you think caused this incredible transformation? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing stories.